morning. It's Deborah. It's in story live and it is Tuesday morning. It's spring, but it's raining. So here I am inside in my in inside corner of uh, videoing. And so today I want you to take a moment and really just stop and drop everything. You know how I'm always talking about um, pause, notice and shift. And I've been talking a lot about this the concept of what does it mean to shift not stay stuck where you are but to literally shift into something new so you can shift out of where you've been stuck and you can also shift in to something new and as i've been thinking about this word shift it's been coming up in lots of places in lots of ways and um, my whole vision for a year of transformation goes through shift shape and share and what I find is happening is that there are a lot of us who are being called to something more. This sense that there's a whole aspect of your gifts, your talents, your abilities that you have not accessed or you haven't really shared them and brought them to the front. And usually and largely this is because um, you couldn't when you were younger. Hi, Susan. You couldn't do it because that the world didn't receive it well. You know, we got in trouble. We got told to be quiet, whatever it was. And now I talk a lot about how you get to have it back. It's not gone. If you think about it, you know, I use the metaphor of the sun covered by clouds. Or if you think of like, like a ball, like a light bulb or something with, with paint over it, like your soul and your soul story it's not gone and it's not diminished it's not reduced your soul can never be tainted or or broken or reduced or its light cannot be diminished it can be covered up <laughs> but it's not gone it's not gone and what i think starts to happen to us it's at different points and different reasons for different people but you start to feel that inner shininess of your essence pushing on you like it's there, you feel it, but it doesn't have a shape in the physical world. It doesn't have a form of expression. And it's also often kind of couched in some kind of fear, doubt, lack, unworthiness, something like that. And, um, and what I am finding is if you notice that feeling and you feel it and you join with other people who are doing this work, who will give you new feedback, Right, because here's the thing, we got feedback that said, oh no, that part is not good, not right, not appropriate, and you can't do it, whatever it was. So we need to be able to be somewhere safe. Take that part out, shine it up a little, share it in its unformed, unperfectness, and then have somebody be moved by it. One of the things I've discovered when people in my group ask me, well, how do I know if what I share will be good? I said, if it moves you, it will move your followers. It will move people connected to you. Hi, Gwen, who is doing this? I was just reading your post, Gwen. <laughs> um, and I, so, you know, Gwen, you're so involved in feeling this. And Gwen's in my in-story group. But this idea that you have this shiny soul that is your soul story essence and it's there and it's beautiful and it's shining and it's covered up with all kinds of fear, worry, doubt, unworthiness, and so forth. And that stuff can be cleaned up, so to speak. And, um, and when you're in a safe community, then when you sort of share that shiny part and you're waiting for, you know, like someone, something bad to happen and nothing bad happens and the opposite happens, the people around you love it so much, it begins to give you a whole new framework and structure and trust that, oh, you know what? Maybe I had been right all along. Maybe this way I've always kind of been and known and felt is good and right and wondrous and beautiful. And then I have you share it and then you get feedback and then I make you bring it out in the world so that the world can benefit. And I think that's what's happening now is that a lot of us are feeling this because we're being called to share this other realm, this other way of knowing intuition and insight and um, and so forth. And, and there's a lot of talk now about what it means to be an empath. And in fact, there's a summit going on, you can look it up called the evolutionary empath. 
and and soon I'm gonna be probably not till the beginning of summer I'm going to start hosting a whole new series of small um, more intimate interview series um, called the in story show and we're gonna focus on different qualities and traits that we are bringing back like the power of being an empath or an introvert or a creative or a spiritual being like these are our powers our superpowers so to speak as opposed to our liabilities <laughs> and so what I want you to do today wherever you are if you're an in store you get to do it with us but anywhere that you are pause and just stop everything and notice hmm what can I notice notice what you're noticing notice how are you feeling what are you seeing just pause and notice there, there's something so powerful about noticing because it gives you the, the just the word itself the concept gives you the idea of seeing things without judgment you notice oh look at that <laughs> and then is there something you want to shift hi Lavana is there something you want to shift so first you start with where is there something you want to shift out of but what I'm going to be talking about more this week is where do you want to shift into how can you shift into a more open a deeper more connected place so there's also the shifting forward into the new there's sort of shifting away from the old and forward into the new um so you know it can I say either pause notice and shift or sometimes it's pause notice and choose in that moment um when I teach about developing trust it includes this part that this ability to pause notice something and choose something different it just seems so simple but it's super powerful <laughs> and it allows you to kind of bring up bring out more of that curious aspect of our beingness like hmm um and and it goes along with my whole teaching about how to get out of the goo because when you're in a place that's difficult you if you notice it then you can use a tool because really what does it mean when I say pause notice and choose it means choose a tool choose to do do something I always say the only way to get out of the goo is to do something anything good not beat yourself up that's the one thing you can't do but you can go for a walk you can read a book you can call a friend you can listen to somebody wacky like me hi Paulette um, but this process is one of my most fundamental teachings and I'm totally not the only person who teaches this obviously <laughs> but <laughs> you we we hear it from wherever we land pause notice and shift or pause notice and choose you can think of it either way like sometimes I'll be like in one of those moments where I just feel off like I feel grumpy or irritated or something and nothing is occurring <laughs> ever had that where nothing is actually occurring it's all like literally I pause go oh what's going on what is this like why am I feeling like this what's but I'll, I'll say to myself is what's bothering me <laughs> and uh, and then I'll choose to do something about it either I'll process that particular thing or go for a walk or I'll write or whatever it is but pick a tool if you are watching me you have tools <laughs> I mean I might be one of your tools but you have tools and this is a big thing for us to realize it's not that all hell doesn't break loose it's not that things don't get hard sometimes it's not that stuff doesn't happen it does I just want you to notice how much more quickly you get back up you know I have a lot of things I always say <laughs> so I'm always saying it and one of them is there is only fall down get up you know in in Judaism we have fall down a, a tzaddik a righteous person someone who falls down seven times and gets up eight meaning you someone said that no it's fall down seven times and get up seven times I, I don't it sounds better fall down seven times and get up eight you're always getting up more times than you're falling down somehow and what I mean by that is that it's like growing and doing better doesn't mean that stuff doesn't come up but I want you to notice how much more quickly you get back up Paulette you really notice this we it, hard stuff just doesn't take us down <coughs> excuse me as far down or for as long these tools 
are so powerful so that you don't stay stuck in the hard place. You don't stay stuck in the goo. You know what to do. All right. So when you're in the goo, you go, oh, I'm in the goo. What do I need to do? That's it. And then you do something and then you're out of the goo. That's it. I mean, it, it sounds easy and oddly, it's not that it doesn't feel painful or whatever in the moment, but it's actually not that hard. It's as you get better tools, it's not as hard to make that shift out of the, those awkward moments. Um, and then the big part, I think, is that we, um, we don't beat ourselves up. This is the one thing I teach also over and over. When you land in the goo, if you know my teaching about the goo, most of you who are listening know that. It's always like if you use the caterpillar metaphor, the caterpillar makes its crystals, it turns to goo. No one likes that. But it can't become the butterfly any other way. And when God created the world, God, I, the sort of elevated way to say it is vision, chaos, manifestation. That's how God made the world. And if God had to do go through that middle phase of that chaos, that goo, don't think you don't have to. All creative endeavor requires this. Um, Stephen Pressfield in his book, The War of Art, talks about it as resistance, which it is resistance. But you can name it many things and has many faces and feelings. I personally like the goo because it's humorous and visceral and a metaphor. <laughs> and, um, and then you say, oh, I'm in the goo. And when you know that is the middle step of all creative endeavor, you're like, oh, I'm in the middle of creative endeavor. I'm in the goo. That's normal. Not bad. So then you don't do the one thing that really doesn't work, which is you beat yourself up and stay there longer. That's the only thing not to do. So if you're in the goo, you say, oh, I'm in the goo. What do I need to do? And then choose a tool. It's the same thing as pause, notice, and shift. You pause, you notice I'm in the goo. Then the shift and the choose is picking a tool. What shifts your energy? What raises your vibration, changes your mood, makes you... Sometimes people, it's as simple as physically smile, literally smile. You can try it right now. No one can see. I can't see you. But I have done this literally. This doesn't work for everyone, but this there's lots of tools. Just physically smile and it shifts your energy. So what works for you? I would love to hear actually in the comments if you want to share what are some of your favorite tools to shift your energy when you get in the goo? How do you get out of the goo? What do you do? I would love to know because there are tons of tools. You know me, I love to go out in the forest and run and walk. And even many years ago, I've always used walking, even before I did running, my children would say, Mom, you need to go for your walk. <laughs> so I would, and then I would come back and I would be much better. <laughs> um, so you, you, know, you find that it's much easier to hold back a, a negative burst, a spite of anger, if you have these tools, if you're taking care of yourself, if you're raising your consciousness, you can... Go, oh, I'm feeling mad. I'm going to pause. Paulette, you're sitting outside right now. Love it. I would be, except it's raining. <laughs> but I'm still, I didn't go for my run yet. I'm still going to go rain or not. Um, but notice yourself. Catch yourself. I listened to a beautiful uh, speaker, a rabbi, this weekend. And one of the things he said, among the many beautiful things he said, drumming. I love that, Gwen. That is a really, you know, people who have music at their as their ability can really shift out of the goo. And um, one of the things this rabbi said, when you're in a relationship and you start to feel like you want to spout out negative words or anger to the person you love, don't do that. Don't do that to them. Don't do that. Stop, pause, notice, and shift before you talk to them. <laughs> what a concept, right? So that's what growth is, is being able to do that work so that we don't hurt the people around us and we don't beat ourselves up. So, thank you for sharing. Gwen said drumming is one of the things that she gets out of the goo. Paula said she's sitting outside, going outside. I think going in nature helps a lot of people. Um, and I imagine some people drawing, putting color on paper. Um, sometimes you listen, like some, you listen to me, I listen to speakers. You know, if I listen to a really strong spiritual teacher, often that will shift my energy. Um, and, but a lot of it is getting off of automatic. It's that ability to pause, notice, hmm, 
and then do something to shift. So that is what I want to leave you with and uh, have an amazing day. And as always, remember to go out in the world, share your story, live your purpose and be a blessing and know that you're amazing. <laughs>